What's good, everybody? My name is Mateo Toro. I'm a running gun filmmaker based out of Reading, Pennsylvania. In today's video, I'm going to show you my Sony FX6 Cinema Rig. This is the rig that I put together over the last few weeks with different moving parts that just make this the perfect rig for my needs as an independent filmmaker. I'm doing a lot of mini dog work lately, a lot of music videos, a lot of sit down interviews for corporate work. And honestly, this thing is just very, very catered to my needs. It's very light, so I'm able to use a handheld if I want to. If I want to mount it on my easy rig, I can do that in a matter of seconds. And of course, I have a base plate that allows me to mount it on a tripod or sticks very, very quickly. So if you're someone who's an independent filmmaker, running gun in the style that I like to be in, uh, this is honestly probably the best way I've rigged it out for my needs and hopefully it matches what you're trying to accomplish as well. So let's start off with the cage that I decided to go with for my Sony FX6. I went with Tilta for two factors. One, it's a very, very light cage. It doesn't add too much weight to your Sony FX6. So if you still want to be handheld, and just be able to move around as a running gun filmmaker, you're very easily able to do so if you don't want anything attached but the top handle. And two, it's just very affordable. I think I really appreciate what Tilta is coming out with at the price point that they are with their products. I used a lot of their cages for my A7S III, for my A7 IV. And if you were to start with like a wooden camera or a bright tangerine cage, you're probably around $1,500 to even get kind of a suited out cage in the way that Tilta has theirs. And it's only about $290 after taxes. So if we move to the right side of the cinema rig, this is where I have my side grip that comes with the Sony FX6. It's undeniably comfortable. It's one of the most comfortable side grips I've personally have ever used. So the fact that it just comes with the Sony FX6 Six, I had no reason to try to get another one. Um, it just works perfectly. All this different customizable buttons, the record button, power zoom button. Uh, it's just so, so useful. So I don't really see the need to try to get a third party one because this one does it all. And again, it's so comfortable, especially since you're able to really just mount the position of the grip any way that you are filming with. So you keep your wrist in a neutral position and keep your wrist safe. Right here, we have this right side mounting point from the tilted cage. It comes with the tilted cage and it's secured to the top plate and the bottom plate, so it's not going anywhere. And it has just a bunch of different mounting points. I'm personally just using the cold shoe mount at this moment, and I have a Roll Wireless Go recorder uh, just attached to the cold shoe. And the reason that is, is because if I'm doing a very, very important mini dock and I just have to make sure I get audio no matter what, I don't want anything to fail, I just quickly put this on someone, whether I have a lab on it or not, and I'm still able to just get um, another channel of audio to just keep that peace of mind. So it's always right here. It doesn't really weigh anything. So I just like keeping it there. So let's move over to the back side of the camera, which is where the battery obviously goes. Like I said, the Tilta cage does come with a V mount battery plate that you can attach to the Sony FX6 and then it just attach a V mount. So I have that option if I ever want to use a V mount battery as of right now. For my needs, I'm not doing that type of long continuous recording where I need a battery of that size. So instead of using a V-mount battery at this moment, I went with this Core Nano 98 watt battery. Um, it attaches BPU, so just like the one that comes with the Sony FX6, this was a 35 watt one, but this one's 98. So I get like four and a half hours of recording, believe it or not. And I have a USB-A port, so if I want to charge my phone or if I want to charge a just any type of receiver or anything like that, I can definitely do so with this battery. And then I also have this D-Tap uh, little section right here, which I'm able to connect to my Atomos Shinobi seven inch monitor. So this powers my monitor and it powers my camera. And if I need to charge any type of receiver or my iPad, if I'm wireless monitoring with my iPad, I can do that with just this battery. And it gets me through a whole day of shooting, whether it's mini docs or corporate work, it hasn't failed me once. And again, I just keep this 35 watt one. Um, as a backup, just in case I do start running out of battery. And this Core Nano 98 watt battery is a lot cheaper than the one you get from Sony. I think there's like $440. This one's only about 280. So you almost can get two for the price of one um, instead of going to proprietary Sony battery. So like I mentioned, this D-Tap cable is a D-Tap to DC power cable, which powers my monitor. This is my seven inch monitor. It's by Atomos. It's a Shinobi seven inch. Why I like this monitor is because it has 2200 nits of peak brightness so it's very very bright you can use it outside without needing a sun hood i've never really had a need for a sun hood at this given moment and then obviously i can power with dc so through the d-tap cable i'm able to run power to the atomo shinobi seven inch without needing to have two extra sony mpf batteries so i save a lot of pound off my rig just by using the d-tap cable and since the sony fx6 does have a professional port such as sdi i'm able to use an sdi cable to send the signal to my monitor so i'm not using the hdmi and i have to say after years of using hdmi this is just a dream come true and just knowing that it's secured it's locked and my signal is just not even cut off or my hdmi cable is not just going to get pulled off randomly 
I really, really like. I have an SDI and it's definitely a big game changer in my opinion. So let's move on to probably my favorite piece of gear on the entire rig and it's the monitor arm that I decided to go with. If you are in the market for a monitor arm, I probably understand your pain. It's very frustrating. I tested out so many different monitor arms throughout just trying to make this the perfect rig. There's so many different little things that make a monitor arm just not very good. And it could be how big it is, it could be how heavy it is, whether it adds a lot of weight to your rig, it could be how flexible it is, how you mount it to the, to the cage or the rig. Uh, there's just so many things that go wrong with monitor arms, so it was really hard to find a really good option that I felt like balanced weight, balanced flexibility, and also versatility. And this iFootage monitor arm is probably the best that I've been able to find. And it's under $100 compared to like a wooden camera or a bright tangerine. This is honestly even better than both of them just because of the versatility. So I'll show you right now. So as you can see, the monitor arm is seven inches. I have it rigged on the left side of the cage. And what makes this monitor arm so special is the versatility once again. If I wanna take off my seven inch monitor, I have to release this lever. But my monitor still hasn't come off. That's where this little security feature is right here. And now I can quickly slide it out. So as you can see, I have this quick release mounting pin on my monitor. This allows me to just slide it right back to our monitor in a matter of seconds. So if I have a bunch of these mounting points, I can stick them on my five inch monitor, I can stick them on a, another boom mic, a, a audio recorder, whatever has a quarter inch or three eighths uh, mounting option, this can go on it. So this is just so amazing because if you have a bunch of these laying around, you can have quick release input onto this monitor arm within seconds. And the way the monitor arm is actually attached to my cage is another one of those mounting points. So if I wanna take it off, I still have to hit this little security lever over here. And as you can see, now I have the entire monitor arm off my cage and another one of those mounting points is right there. That's amazing. I can take off the monitor arm in seconds and go very, very stripped down as just a cage with a audio top handle, or I can put it back on, put my seven inch monitor within seconds. And if I wanna switch this for anything else, I can do so. So honestly, it's just in a very versatile monitor arm that I think everyone should possibly go and grab. And then to manage the cables just a little bit better, I have these little sprig uh, cable management quarter inch uh, little mounting pins, and they are very, very versatile and very convenient and I just gotta slide the cable in there, and voila, a little bit of cable man. Moving on to audio options, which we all know as Sony FX6 owners is the most frustrating part of the Sony FX6. It's the perfect camera until you talk about audio and the fact that it doesn't have a three and a half millimeter audio input, and you're restricted to using a top handle to have any audio input at all, which is the two DSLR inputs. So I'm, right now, I'm currently using this ECM XM1 Sony uh, boom mic. Uh, don't ask me why, and the only reason why I'm actually using it is because I'm waiting for a microphone to come in that is on back order, that's a short boom mic. And as you all may know already, you do need these Sony uh, microphone spacers to be able to mount any type of usable microphone onto this uh, microphone holder. It's honestly very annoying, so you have to get these rubber spacers to fit anything, even this Sony <laughs> proprietary microphone. If audio isn't a priority, then I'm just using this as my input one and then I'm just running a boom mic to an audio recorder um, separately, and then I just use this to match the audio because I'm still not very <laughs> confident in the audio I can get with the FX6, and I'm still really learning it. But if I do need a quick solution, like I said, I have this Rode Wireless Go right here in case I need a backup, and then I have this Rode Wireless Go receiver mounted up here, but I don't have a three and a half millimeter jack. But what I have is this little attachment from Rode and it allows me to put a three and a half millimeter input and then use that to attach it to the XLR input two on the Sony FX6 top handle. For now, it's a little cheap solution that I'm using because this allows me to get two channels of audio. I can lav two different people at the same time with one receiver. And then this is just to get scratch audio. And then if I'm doing like a very important sit down interview, I still wanna get like 24 bit wave audio. So I just use my Zoom H6 Pro and the boom mic that I have. Now moving on to the front side of my cinema rig, this is my matte box from Small Rig. Uh, I just like how lightweight it is, the carbon fiber, it doesn't really add much weight to my, to my rig in, in totality, so I'm able to keep it light if I'm handheld. Um, and if I'm using the Easy Rig, I can stay under that 15 pound weight limit that the Minimax has. Now as you can see right here on the top handle, I do have this quarter inch stainless steel mounting bolt. So if I want to go from handheld to my easy rig in a matter of seconds, I just pull this down. 
And voila, now I'm mounted on my easy rig and I'm able to just distribute that weight evenly and protect my back, protect my shoulders, save myself from going to the chiropractor. And I'm obviously able to just do a lot longer handheld shoots when I'm doing mini docs, interviews, et cetera, et cetera, running gun filmmaking. If you wanna see a very stripped down version of the Sony FX6 without the cage, I'll start with that. I don't have the mat box on right now. I can easily take off my seven inch monitor. So I'll take that off. Take off the D-tap cable. So again, this is the monitor on from iFootage. Again, with the quick release system, I can just hit the lever and take it off within seconds. And I still have that mounting option right here. So again, if I wanna put like a external recorder, another boom mic, whatever has a quarter inch or three eighths inch uh, connector, I can just attach it to that within seconds. Let's say I don't need the Royal Wireless Go 2 because I'm just doing handheld. I can take that off very simply. I can put the monitor from the FX6 off to the side. And I'm still at a very stripped down yet very comfortable handheld cinema rig without all those moving parts. So what makes the rig really complete is obviously the base plate by Tilta. It's secured to two different mounting options at the bottom. So it's very, very secure. It's not flimsy at all. That's what I do like about this um, Sony FX6 compared to like the Alpha days when I was using my A7S3 or even the A7 IV, which I'm filming with. You only have one quarter inch um, mounting option at the bottom. So your rig can still be kind of flimsy when you attach a cage to it. Not in this case. Oops, almost forgot about the most important piece of gear, which is this 90 degree, three and a half millimeter jack uh, adapter. And that is because where they place the headphone jack for the Sony FX6, once you attach your headphones, you're pretty much blocking uh, the power button. So that is very annoying. So I do recommend you get a 90 degree adapter so you can easily just put your headphones right here to the side and still have uh, option to move your power button at any time that you please. At the bottom attached to the base plate, I have my Manfrotto slide plate that goes onto the video head 502, I think, from Manfrotto. And then I have these uh, 15 millimeter rods from Small Rig. The one that comes with the tilt cage, I will say are a little bit short. So I just have these Small Rig ones as of now. So if I wanna put a follow focus, not with a, a vintage lens, I haven't seen a mod of this uh, contact Zeiss lens just yet. If I wanna put a follow focus, maybe some type of mat box in the features I'm looking at that has a slide door that you attach it to the rods and then you can just move, move it off the lens and just swap the lens very, very quickly. And that's what I love about the Sony FX6 and I'm so glad I upgraded from my Sony a7S III is that although it does have all these amazing inputs and, and, and the way you're able to customize it to really fit any type of production that you're doing, it's still very light. And if you want to go strip down bare bones with just a top handle and a side grip, I can do that. If I want to mount a mat box and just do a whole seven inch monitor and just do a whole bunch of different accessories, I can still do that as well. It's just very tailored to who you are as a filmmaker. And I think this camera can just grow with your needs and your production levels. So thank you for watching this video. Hope the Sony FX6 Cinema Rig video helped you out and your journey start rigging on your Sony FX6 if you just got one. If you have any questions about any of these moving parts that I have for my Cinema Rig, leave them in the comment section below. I'll feel free to answer any of them. And every single piece of gear will be linked in the description box below. Can't wait to shoot a lot of Sony FX6 content. I'm so in love with this camera. I'm shooting all the time, just testing out lenses, testing out uh, just all these features. So you will see a lot of Sony FX6 content on my channel. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one. Peace.